I'm <laughs> just like, mode time. All right. What's going on? This is Cap C B 104 right here, and I'm hanging out with Mati's Yahoo. How you doing, man? Good, thanks. How are you? Doing really good. Um, you have an album out right now called The Light, and uh, the single off of it called One Day. Um, actually, which just got picked up by, well, my bad. Let's do that over. We'll edit it out. <laughs> Let's keep going. Sorry. <laughs> um, let me make sure mine is on. <laughs> oh, please. It's so natural now for somebody's phone to go off in the middle of everything. That's awesome. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> to hear everybody's ringtone. And then when it's, uh, it's an iPhone ringtone, everybody that, That's loves. actually my friend Sarah saying, get out of here. I love him. Because yeah. I was like, I'm interviewing Mati's Yahoo right now. <laughs> there you go, Sarah. You got your little shout out right there. <laughs> All right. So here I am with Mati's Yahoo in the studio hanging out. And he has an album out called The Light. And uh, actually, the first single off of it is called One Day, and it's been redone with Akon. And it's actually going to be on the Olympics. And here it is, the gold medal. Um, this song's been out for a minute, but now collaborating with Akon, where did that collaboration come from? Uh, I have a couple of friends that, that work with him and played him the song, and he really, he really fell in love with the song. Okay. He, he really wanted to do a collaboration and do something on it, so... And it just okay. came about. Not going to say no to Akon. Uh, and how was it working <laughs> with Akon? Uh, well, you know how it is these days. You don't, you don't really work. You don't. It's, it's we a had a, we had a phone call. <laughs> <laughs> he's got about, he's got about fifteen phone numbers. Oh, jeez. Yeah. But um, how did the Olympics come about then? The whole Olympic thing just jumping on. Same kind of thing. They heard the song. Yeah, they got cool. interested in it. It's kind of the, sort of the same kind of theme as the Olympics. You know, of kind of a unification. Mm -hmm different peoples from different places coming together and um, it, it really works it fits right in with the message and the, the dream and the hope you know? and that's what's up um, and obviously you're a Hasidic Jew and doing the whole reggae thing which is a very like you know putting that all together um, what are your biggest influences of taking a part in music be it reggae or anything else like what are your biggest things that made Mahdi's Yahoo come about um, I guess the biggest influence in, in, in my music was probably Bob Marley and, and how I started to get really get into music and see myself as a singer and start mm -hmm. singing and, and writing. And then the next kind of big influence I had was a cat named Sizzla, who was okay, a yeah. Jamaican artist. And he kind of just was more of a, a new school, kind of with more, a little bit more of a hip-hop flavor and mm -hmm. kind of a fresh, younger take. So that I got into that. And... All, both of those artists, their music, their content, you know, the lyrics and whatnot comes from a lot of his quotations from the Old Testament, you know, from the Bible. Yeah. Um, directly quoted from the Psalms or from, you know, Book of Exodus or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. So it made a lot of sense for me because that's the stuff I was studying and the stuff I was relating to as a Jew. And so, uh, but the place where I always really connected to was through music. So I bring, brought the music in and it, it really happened very organically. That's what's up. Uh, you're also uh, being noted as you were, a, back in the day, you used to be a fish head. You used to follow fish around and stuff and everything. Um, were they such a big influence on you, too, knowing that your music you do with a band and everything and the whole jam effect of it? Yeah, they were, too. I mean, uh, I went to the first fish concert I went to. I was 16 years old. Wow. And, um, and it changed my life. You know, that was after that night I knew that that was the only thing that I, I was going to be able to do for the rest of my life. That's what's up. It was music, whether it was following them around in a car, you know, with a couple <laughs> bucks in my pocket, or it was making my own music or yeah. something. I knew music had to be part of my life. And and then I, I also, you know, the whole experience of improvisation and, and the show being not just a performance, but really a spiritual kind of, uh, almost like a, you know, some kind of service, you know. Yeah brings people to a, to a deeper place within themselves and whatnot, so. And and you actually got invited then to play alongside of them. How was that from following them to playing with them? That was pretty surreal because I was I was doing a Bob Marley song. Okay. Like, uh, I met Trey at Bonnaroo, I think it was 2005 or 2006, and um, I met him right before set, and then I asked if I, you know, we talked about going on, and he asked if I knew any Bob Marley songs, mm -hmm. so. The combination of singing a Bob Marley song with you know the the guitar player of the band that I yeah. you know you know dropped out of high school and followed around the country <laughs> you know I mean it was it was surreal it was, was kind of crazy 
That's real crazy. I remember when when you dropped and when you came out back in the day, like when you when you dropped your first single, your first album and stuff. Did you really like you know the whole image thing? Like you know how this whole this whole industry is based on image and stuff and everything. Um, but when you came out, I mean, you had such powerful music and stuff and everything. Were you at any chance thinking that is are people gonna catch on to this or, you know, what it, what it, what was your outtake on that? Like, and, but they, I mean, eventually right. everybody did catch on and right. you blew up. But it was like. In that in that time, did you even? Well, I was, I was always one thing about me was I was always a, a really confident about making music, mm -hmm. and uh, from from those early experiences, um, I knew that that's what I was. I felt that that's what I was destined to do. Mm -hmm. So even when I was not, when I was sitting in my in my living you know in my living room, the apartment I shared with four people you know yeah. with my PA system just beatboxing yeah you know like for hours. <laughs> And listening to, to Sizzla and instrumentals, you know, hip hop and inst Dre instrumentals and stuff, and writing rhymes and stuff, and um, I always felt that was what I was going to do. And then when I became religious, and I, it actually started to happen, you know, mm -hmm. it was kind of like, oh, okay, this is this now this is going to happen. And I never thought about how other people are perceiving me or what people think when they look at me. It wasn't until already like three, four years into my career that I was like, oh, people have written a lot about like you know, what you know how is he accepted with how he looks and yeah. everything else and it never was even a, a thing in my mind you know? that's what's up though yeah. all right cool that's what's going on um I, I mean are you i know you just did a three-day event and that happened out in uh was it in new york or in brooklyn or something like that or oh um the the, the, the hanukkah shows that we did i think you did the Han oh, no it was something else i forgot what it was called the, was it the light something like that the festival of light festival of light yes yeah. It's eight shows that we do in New York, and uh, we did four in Brooklyn, four okay. in Manhattan, yeah, we, and that was like our fourth year doing it. Oh wow! Okay, so this has been an ongoing event. Okay, yeah. I've been, I haven't gone to New York in a hot minute, so. All right. <laughs> it's not that far away. We just drove from there. I know exactly. <laughs> so I'm actually originally from New York. Um, you actually were born here in PA, actually. I was born in Bryn Mawr Hospital. Bryn Mawr. Okay. And then my, my my parents moved to the West Coast to San Francisco and Berkeley for about five years, and then back to New York. So. All right, cool. Um, so you're totally entrenched in hip hop. I mean, hearing that you do beatboxing, you also wrote lyrics and stuff. Um, what, are, what were your major influences in hip hop, basically? Like, well, in high school, I was always kind of like a hippie with all my friends who listen to rap music, and right. I was always the guy telling them like, "Turn it off, man!" I hate this. <laughs> you know, in my sandals in like January, and and, um, and then finally, some. You know, the first record that really turned me on was. Um, the Nas It Was Written record. And it was the intro to the record. It was like, uh, the intro was a slave beating up a slave master. Okay. Like rebelling against the slave yes, master. Yes, that was from, uh, I think it was, uh, was it that was, was, it was, was written. written. Yeah, yeah, the first, the intro. And, um, that. and I, that, that record was like, I thought that was so cool. And then I, li I actually listened to the record and I, I liked it. I liked what he was saying and I liked the music. And then I started, I guess the next biggest influence for me would be Outkast. And that was like around the time of the Equemini album. Ooh. And that was that was an amazing. That was amazing. To me, Atlians was like yeah, yeah. That right. was a whole different thing from what their first album was. And I'm like, wow, these guys are crazy, but yeah. they're going to a whole different thing. You beatbox. I definitely want a beatbox rendition from you, real quick. Hear something.